It's my first time here, and uh, you have made quite an impression. We had an amazing time last night, and just, uh, you know, sharing the first service. Your team here, everyone that's been a part of putting this together, you know, my, is so like what this talk is, you know, my talk is Ohana Aloha, really about family, and what does that mean? And uh, I feel the family here, because, you know, they could, you know, poke and josh, and sometimes, you know, say what we need. And, uh, but it's efficient, and it's, everyone has the same intention. It's just so beautiful, so really, um, I, I go to many places, and uh, you don't always feel this kind of cohesion, connectedness, like purpose for like, I don't know, the greater purpose. I just, so it's so good. I don't even know that I need to share any of this. So basically, Faith's just gonna share about her Filipino Hawaii upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe share some insight on that. So uh, does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. My first gig, you guys, was I was flown to um, Taj Mahal, Atlantic City for a big, huge Vietnamese concert. I don't know, I, w I was there, I'm Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> but we sang in pink, peel, pink um, vinyl jackets, fishnets, boots, right? Dancers, <laughs> we are family, right? <laughs> we literally sang one song, did we close it yet? Yeah. Wow. But anyway, we are family. Um, it's been a journey, as I'm sure maybe for you too, to understand what does that mean? Blood relatives, not blood, community, you know, it's, so uh, that's really what I want to talk about because I was born and raised in Hawaii, born in Kauai, raised on Oahu, moved away for college, and after 20-something years, my husband and I, who's my, you know, my first love, we just moved back last year back to Hawaii to raise my two little ones. We started later, a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, to raise them with cousins, with aunties, with uncles, with grandma and grandpa. And so, you know, and we moved them back, this is not by accident, to Hawaii, which is a heart chakra of the world. Um, and the heart chakra is the center for unconditional love and what I'm gonna call aloha. Alo means presence and ha, that's how the kahunas, the shamans say it, ha. Um, it's breath, presence of breath. It's where the spirit meets the physical. Can you think of any other instance in your life where aloha needs to be grounded and lived out than with your family? with people that you interact with all the time, people that you're growing with, maybe not at the same time, but you're going through your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff and transforming together. So Ram Dass has this amazing, has this great quote, you're gonna love this. If you think you are so enlightened, go and spend a week with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> or your family or whoever, right? Relationship with your parents or your, you know, your family is not only the primordial, right? Primor the first relationship that sets the tone for all other relationships. It is also a good test, get this, for your degree of presence, right? This is, this is gonna get you. The more shared past there is in a relationship, the more present you need to be. Otherwise, you will be forced to relive the past again and again. So I go home and, you know, I'm getting it. Like, I lived away. It's not the same. I mean, I give, especially for those of you that have been with this community for a while, I, I give you props because, you know, I chose the easy way out. I moved away. But to be with people, to really be with them, engaged, and like I said, to move through stuff, to share your joys and your highs, that's, it's not easy, but wow, presence. I, I know before I read that, I never really thought of that my family would. <laughs> require demand me to be present or else we'll just be stuck in a time loop right and i'll be little whoever I, actually my first name was esther esther faith rivera i'll be little esther <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't bad but you know we want to grow so yeah it's been over a year now and uh yeah it's 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 my it's the most spiritual practice i think what it's like spiritual practice boot camp. it's like my boot camp <laughs> being, being with family so um so now ohana. Oha means uh, young shoots of taro. And oha, ohana, it makes it plural. So I definitely grew up in a village of young shoots. My dad is an immigrant from Philippines. He was on his way to Maine to work in the agricultural world. Um, but he met my mom on Oahu, and you know they never, he never left, <laughs> uh, which is awesome with love. And so we rented a room in a house that had like maybe three or four other house homes on this lot. We were in one room and you know, I grew up 
taking my baths. It was a group event. Like I'd be outside in the middle in the tub. Every she'd be scrubbing me down, you know. Yeah. And I found out from my mom that um, what I love to do. Well, you already saw it. Is I love you know getting people to sing and dance together. They said I used to line up all the grandmas and grandpas, all the old folks, and say, "Follow me," you know. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, so I definitely grew up with all of that around me. And even more, I saw it in my husband. He's Chinese. They've been there probably a few generations now in Hawaii. Um, his mom has, there's six sisters. So, you know, five other aunties. I mean, it's kind of intimidating. If you've seen Joy Luck Club, it's, they're not like docile all the time. Mean, <laughs> they're not. They're kind of in your face. I was like, oh my God, six. Okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And then one, one brother, but can you believe they all went into business, the family superette, and ran a thriving business, and all of the kids, including my husband, it was a, it was a rite of passage, you know, you had to go work in the produce and then be a janitor, and you know. Um, but, and I think it dissolved, not because there's any few, they were just kind of done, everybody wanted to have their holidays, you know. So, uh, and also, Nolan's grandma raised all 20 of those grandkids, they'd be sharing like the one bike, the one skateboard, I'm like, Talk about interdependence and, and really being in each other's lives. And I remember when, I, when we were getting married, I thought, oh, and especially moving back to Hawaii, I thought, I can't go to all their parties. They, they don't just get together for Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's the UH volleyball games, the St. Louis football games. I was like, this is my life now. <laughs> so, but I wonder if you could think back about how you, know, how you were raised. What was the tone that was set for you that maybe, you know, you're bringing with you. Um, did you see that kind of interdependence? Maybe you longed for that kind of shared involvement from your family. But I think it's good to have that, just that awareness that, that Ram Das says to be like, oh, and, and kind of look, am I in the time loop? Especially if you're still with your family. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good just to check in. So, so from that little room, we moved. Every time my dad would do a little better, he worked at a nursery, and then he got, you know, maybe he was a manager, you know, years later. We moved to our own bottom floor of a townhouse, and there's a little stream, and I had my dog Prince, and, but I, w I was lonely. I didn't have a six sister for seven years, so I, I, one by one, I'd ask them to get me pets. Any pet lovers? Yes, yes, okay, okay, okay. Um, so I had a dog, a minor bird that I was trying to teach to talk, didn't happen. <laughs> and like 10 guinea pigs, <laughs> comet, sunshine, starlight, star, you know, I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know. I and I go home one day and they're all gone. They're all gone. My dad says, oh, where's my, and he goes, we set them free into the mountain. You know, they're trying to make, make it this nice thing. We let them free into the mountains. And, but really, we're moving to a new house, and they said they didn't let us have pets. Well, they were the they. <laughs> right? Okay. Oh my God, how dark should I go? I shouldn't go dark. <laughs> it's not even necessary. I'm not going to do it. Ask me, ask me in private. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, I didn't know that was an issue for me. I mean, I think I was mad in the moment, you know, but, or I blocked it out. Ye fast forward years later, I'm an adult at a workshop I didn't want to be at. Someone paid for me, you know, gifted it to me. Thank you. You know, <laughs> it was actually size seminars for any of you that, that know size. And here I am, the exercises were at a graveyard looking at the stuff. That's going to be where I'm going to use a lot in our talk. <laughs> stuff. I'm looking at stuff. I'm like, I don't have stuff. I don't want it. And then I began bawling crying this is decades after i'm like oh my god this is about comet and starlight you know <laughs> but really i i didn't know i'm like they were they were my family and what i what began to reveal itself to me was i had made this false belief every time my dad became more successful i lost we lost people the more you succeed the more i do my music do this thing i'm supposed to do i'm going to lose people so no wonder I moved away for college, right? I'm going to move away. Let me just, you can't leave me. What was my career? I travel into communities and we love, and then I, you know, I leave, I leave, I leave. And I was terrified of having kids, because what's a greater thing to lose, right? Whew, and I had a lot of stage fright. I mean, a lot. I quit 
two, three times. If Sister Celeste didn't stop me in eighth grade, because I, I went to 12 years Catholic school, so the nuns, the sisters taught me, which sometimes isn't pleasant. <laughs> Everybody, and they, do, they were doing their best, right? I'm not blaming them, we're just laughing. I, lo I love Sister Stephanie. Um, they, um, by eighth grade, everyone else had quit. And I said, I'm going to quit, too. I mean, I don't want to do this. And my sister stepped in and said, you're not going to quit. And so, you know, I, if it's yours to do, something's going to step in. It's either still nagging at you, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Or people are going to come in if it's yours to do. So, um, I don't know, what, was, what was my point? Was oh, that, um, oh, well, that, that this false belief really gave me all this fear. It was horrible. I had no joy on the stage, you know. Um, but I think there's something to discovering what those beliefs are so you can what? Let go, Let go change them. And I think, I must say, patting myself on the back, I did it in epic fashion. Want to hear how I did this? <laughs> so, I know I'm like, thank you. I don't know how this happened. I was uh, helping to open the national conference for Centers for Spiritual Living in Chicago. And it was right before Michael Beckwith and Ricky were going to come up. I'm singing this big ballad. And I was thinking, before I go on that stage, I'm going to invite up every pet, every person, even my guardian angels. I'm going to invite everybody every being, any kind of love that's poured at me, I'm going to invite all that energy with me so that music would never separate me. I would have never come alone. And I'll tell you, it changed everything. I had fun on that stage. And, and you're never alone. I mean, I, I didn't get that. So we'll talk more about who your power posse is. But so, so today, before I came, um, before the first service, I intentionally, because I forgot about that, I'm like, I'm going to bring them all up here. <laughs> and they're not going to know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's something to that, the energy of inviting, inviting all, all, all that is for you. And you want the universe is for you, right? God's for you. The grass out there, if you would just say hi, it's saying hi to you. Maybe not loud, but it's... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, wow, I just want to go off on a tangent, but I won't. So, and actually, um, I got confirmation of this, you know, of bringing more energy on the stage. Because for those of you that find yourself on stage or anything, I don't know, but people come up to you and say, oh, I saw your aura, I saw Mother Mary, I saw, you know, they say all these things. Well, after I had that epic breakthrough, um, I had performed, it was two events later, and she said, Faith, I saw this purple glow around the stage. And then it grew bigger and bigger, and dark figures started to appear on your sides. And then she said, and then it went way, way, way back. And I was like, oh my god, that's, that's, my, that's my power posse <laughs> with me. And once I removed that, that false belief, you know, I got pregnant by the next month. You know, and, not, and we weren't really trying, because I was af afraid. But oh my god, so there's, try it, it's good. <laughs> Have an epic break breakthrough. Make a note. That was so brilliant, Faith. Make an epic break. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but really, it's 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 worth it because I'm not. I think someone asked me uh, when I, they were saying um, bye, bye. You know, he was leaving. He said, "Oh, Faith, I guess I have to look up at some false belief that I have." And I'm not for digging stuff up. Okay, I'm not. I say if you can be in your joy and be in love in an authentic place, be there. But if you notice some road bumps. You know, you have a little thing with somebody that said something. Just take notice and say, hmm, is there something there? Because those are our springboards, right? Those little bumps are the springboards to really that next level of greatness that's calling us. So am I doing okay on time? You are. I have five minutes? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Hawaiian song. Okay. No, no, I don't. I want to be respectful. I could just skip all this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So that power posse that I tell you right, it's called Almakua. It's your ancestors. It's called Almakua. Which of course the Hawaiians, you know, have that have that deep connection with them. And and, and this is 
I want to talk about these kahunas that I had met, and those are shamans, you know, who spoke about this aloha, the heartbeat of Hawaii, and how it's meant for all races, all people. Because growing up, I didn't, I didn't see it. That was my experience. It, was, it just felt like not for everybody. <laughs> so it meant a lot to hear that from them. So I helped bring them to a, a conference. If you guys know um, Patty Cota Robles, it was a World Congress on Illumination. And so I had the kahunas come. And so Keahi, one of the younger ones, was walking at the water. You know, there was a waterfall. And he was just looking out of this beautiful scene and started to feel the presence of the ancestors of that land, the Amakua. And every land has that, right? Even here. Um, so he just really took that in and then went back to his room because they had to present again. And as he walked into the room, Kumu Lena'ala, who was the leader of all these kahunas, um, once he walked in, she said, who are you bringing with you? You know, like, who, who's coming? Who's coming with you? But they are so sensitive to, to the Almakua. And so I, I guess one of the points I'm trying to say is, and you know this, Ohana is your blood relatives. It's Hanai. Hanai means the adopted ones, probably like your community here. It's our ancestors. It's the ones that have gone before us and those that are still coming. We are all connected, you know, through that thread. And I'm still learning how to do it, but I feel like we can tap into that wisdom, in, you know, whether it's behind us or in front of us. We're not alone. I didn't have to be scared for. 20 something years on the stage. You don't have to be scared of, you know, like Marianne Williamson's quote, right? Our greatest fear is not, our greatest fear is, is, our, is our own power, is feeling that power. But I'll tell you, there is, on the other side of it, it is, it is like what we did this morning. It's just, it's what Tyler does just all the time. He's just like, pew. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> and, and I, and I mean, it, it, there's a high bar because I mean, all of all of the staff really are so present here. So I don't really need to. I can't skip this. No. Okay. Now, what about nature as part of our ohana? Okay. So the, the Hawaiians say, uh, and who? Oh, M. J. Hardin wrote in one of her books here. A primal sacred family connection ties Hawaiians to the universe, to nature, and to the land and the sea. Nature is where it all begins for Hawaiians. In fact, we call ourselves Keiki Oka Aina, children of the land. And the Aina is a heart matter for the Hawaiians. It's much more than soil or sand. People and nature are siblings born to the same parents at the start of time. So let me just say, because I, you know, I don't want to go over. I, I want to say, one, that it took me leaving Hawaii and meeting people like you, going to New Thought Unity Centers like this, I really got the aloha spirit, really. You know, people welcome me into their homes, and so that's big. That, that's who you are, and that, that means so much, I mean, just to me personally and to everyone. And, and, you know, I'm back home in Hawaii, and I've realized I'm there doing my greatest work yet. That if I, if I can't live in my daily moments with my husband, with my mother-in-law, who we're still living with, with uh, my kids, if I can't live all the things, right, that you and I sing about, talk about, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so <laughs> I shared this in the last service that I went to the Parliament of World Religions in Melbourne, Australia, and all these religions, you know, thousands of different religions. Dalai Lama was there opening the ceremony, and they did big, you know, big welcome for him. And he came on the mic, and oh, very nice, very nice. And then he got us. He goes, what are you going to do when you go home? And we're like, dang, OK. <laughs> But I feel like this is the time we're at. The, if you look at our, what, the political divide, the landscape of our, whatever, of just the world that feels so blue. <laughs> I'll tell you this, it's giving us clarity on who you are and who you say you are. It's giving us clarity on who are you including in your ahana? Who are you including in your heart of love? And maybe are there more people to invite in? According to the Hawaiians, right, ohana includes all of nature, all people. So that, that's our work. And so I'm, I'm going to do my work, I promise, because I know my kids are counting on me, and you're counting on me, and I'm counting on you. I really am. And I love your Rever Reverend Kristen. Oh, she rapped last night. Well, not rapped. I don't know what that was called. She did something. She <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I'm, 
I'm lucky I get to travel and see the impact of what we do. I get to see communities like yours, but this is just to appease me. Do you guys know and feel that you're part of really something greater? Yes. You feel like you're a part of the answer that's happening now? Yes. That's so sweet. Okay, uh, how much more time do I have? Four minutes. Should I sing a little Hawaiian or just, I don't know. Yes. No. <laughs> okay, maybe, yes, four minutes. Will you repeat a line after me? This is a unity prayer, the light of God, but in Hawaiian, would that be nice? Should I play piano? No. I'm going to do it a cappella. Okay. Kamala malama okea kua. E ho o puni mai ya ka ko and you sing mai ya ka ko okay ke aloha o ke aku wa e ki puni mai ya ka ko mai mai ya ka ko Kamana o ke aku ua e ho pa kele mai yaka ko mai yaka ko ke alo ke aku wa e malama mai yaka ko mai yaka ko makahia ka ko e He aku no he he aku no ah ah mene and so it is <laughs> thank you